Okay, here we are moving into the second lecture in chapter 15 on carbohydrates. Uh, so the first lecture ended focusing on those monosaccharides uh, and uh, talking about things like aldoses and ketoses and trioses and tetroses and pentoses and hexoses. Uh, and so we'll pick up uh, with that theme, although uh, instead of the uh, basics of the carbohydrates, we'll go a little further into structure. Okay, so in particular here we're going to look at Fisher projections of monosaccharides, and uh, these are just a, a nice a way to look at how we're going to figure out things like DNL notations. We already mentioned this uh, in a previous lecture where we talked about stereochemistry. We talked about the idea of a Fisher projection as being a way to determine uh, levorotary versus dextrorotary, uh, depending on where that OH group was on the uh, furthest carbon. Uh, so uh, let's uh, take a look and see how we can uh, make uh, simple, or at least as simple as possible, the um, projections of monosaccharides, which are fairly complex structures, right, ranging from, e even for the monosaccharides, three to six carbons. All right, so as I mentioned in the previous slide, we did talk briefly about Fisher projections, and I think I probably said something like, uh, you'll worry about them later when we get to carbohydrates. Well, here we are. Uh, so let's figure these Fisher projections out if you haven't already done so. So a Fisher projection is used to represent carbohydrates. Uh, it places the most oxidized group at the top. So that's your um, aldose or ketose, depending. Uh, so it's either carbon one with the uh, aldoses or carbon two with the ketoses, but they're toward the top. And then we have all those chiral carbons uh, as shown as intersections of uh, vertical lines. Of course, we don't worry about that last carbon or uh, the first carbon uh, because neither of those would be chiral uh, in the, the case of aldoses anyway, uh, but it's those intervening uh, carbons. And in glyceraldehyde, we only have one carbon in the middle, so we're only dealing with one chiral carbon. And the difference between L-glyceraldehyde and D-glyceraldehyde is in the Fischer projection. If you look on the left, the Fischer projection on the left has the hydroxyl group on the left, and therefore it's the levorotary or left-handed form of glyceraldehyde. If we look at the image on the right, now we have a Fischer projection where the hydroxyl group is on the right, and therefore we have the dextrorotary or D-glyceraldehyde, uh, dexter of course being a Latin for uh, right-handed. So there we have it, how we determine D and L um, notation for the chiral carbons in a, a uh, uh, carbohydrate. Of course, uh, again, it's the last chiral carbon. In this case, of course, there's only the one chiral carbon, but that was always our rule. Our furthest chiral carbon away from that oxidized group, whether it's an aldose or a ketose. Okay, so we sort of got into this a little prematurely on the previous slide, but there it is, the DNL notations in a Fischer projection, that OH group on the chiral carbon farthest from the carbonyl group determines if it is the uh, L or D isomer. The left is assigned the letter L for the L isomer, uh, right uh, is assigned the letter D for the D isomer, and it's all depending on where that hydroxyl group appears in the Fischer projection. Remember, the Fischer projection is a flattened three-dimensional representation, so it's showing it in 2D. And we have on our left of the slide here, we have L-glucose, uh, and we see glucose is an aldohexose. Uh, and uh, therefore uh, it's going to be carbon 5 that's going to be our uh, last chiral carbon because carbon 6 is going to have two hydrogens and therefore be achiral. So carbon 5 in glucose, if the OH group, the hydroxyl group, is on the left, uh, as we see on the left-hand slide, we have L-glucose. And if the OH group is on the right-hand side, we have D-glucose. So there we have it. Uh, and it makes a big difference. It may not seem like much, the structures may not look very different, but the human body can only process D-glucose. So uh, you can have all the L-glucose that you want, your body cannot use it. Your brain can't use it for fuel. Uh, it can only use D-glucose. So it's very critical that we get the right form uh, at the right time. Now, of course, it sounds like a great idea. Let's just take the L sugar and we've got something sweet. We can sweeten beverages with it and our body can't use it. And it does sound wonderful. And I think it was even tried, but the big problem is uh, bacteria can process either. So uh, led to some uh, undesirable side effects like diarrhea and uh, other problems associated with an overgrowth of bacteria uh, without humans being able to process it. The bacteria had uh, all their fill and 
Uh, therefore, we don't use those um, L forms of the monosaccharides as um, sweeteners. We found other things to uh, trick our body with. Okay, so before we get any further into it, let's pause here for a learning check. And in this learning check, you're asked to identify each as the D or L isomer. So let's make sure you're able to follow these Fisher projections and see how useful they are in determining L and D isomers. So stop the video here, assign L or D to A, B, and C here based on the Fisher projection, and then start back up when you're ready to check your work. Good luck. Okay, and there we have it. So if we look at A, the last chiral carbon has the OH group on the left. Actually, all the chiral carbons there have the OH group on the left, uh, and we have L ribose. If we look at B now, we have, again, the last chiral carbon or the furthest chiral carbon away from the aldehyde functional group, both uh, ribose and triose are aldo, uh, aldoses, I should say, since I don't have time to count those carbons. Uh, but um, they both have the OH group on the left. So just like we had L ribose in A, we have L triose in B. Now, finally, if we look at C, we uh, find that uh, carbonyl group furthest from the, in this case, a ketone. So it's a ketose. Uh, and furthest from there, we have the OH group on the last chiral carbon being on the right-hand side. And therefore, this is D fructose. So there we have it. Um, and you also got to see a ketose. So uh, notice we ignored that first carbon, uh, the carbon number one, because it's not chiral. So uh, there we have uh, another reason to um, count down instead of looking at the uh, carbon one. So there we have it, L-ribose, L-triose, and D-fructose. Hopefully you had all those correct. If not, please do try some additional practice problems and certainly reach out to me for help if needed. Okay, now we don't mean to hurt any of the monosaccharides feelings with this slide, but let's face it, some monosaccharides are more important than others. And the hexoses in particular, when we're talking about fuels, uh, tend to be the most important monosaccharides. And within those hexoses, glucose, galactose, and fructose tend to be the most important monosaccharides. Again, at least as far as humans are concerned, as I mentioned, we use glucose uh, in our brain as our primary fuel, really the only fuel that the brain can make use of. Galactose, obviously, as mammals, uh, we... Um, at least in our uh, infancy, uh, rely on milk. So galactose is an important monosaccharide. And then fructose, being fruit sugar, as it's commonly called, uh, is a common uh, sugar that uh, we ingest, a common natural sugar uh, that humans ingest. So these are why uh, we consider these the most important monosaccharides. And as I mentioned earlier, the D stereoisomers are commonly found in nature, and they're the type that are used in the cells of the human body. As I mentioned as well, though, uh, certain other types of organisms can process the L enantiomers and uh, therefore you can't just trick the body and expect no consequences. So here we have it, the Fisher projections for D-glucose, D-galactose, and D-fructose. Let's look at D-glucose a little better. So as uh, all of these will have, its formula is C6H12O6. That's any monosaccharide hexose. So uh, D-glucose is also known as dextrose, uh, right? Because it's the D form that we use. We commonly call it dextrose, or it's also known as blood sugar. It's the one that tends to be checked uh, by medical professionals most keenly in the blood. Uh, it's an aldohexose found in fruits, corn syrup, and honey. Uh, it's also found in polymers of starch, cellulose, and glycogen. Uh, glycogen is our storage form for it, so excess glucose is converted to fat and stored. Some is uh, first stored as glycogen in the liver and muscle for short-term storage, and then if you've got lots and lots of glucose around, then uh, our body deals with that excess by storing it as fat, which, uh, again, is a good thing, ultimately, uh, right? At least uh, evolutionarily, that's uh, worked well for us, but... Uh, in the last hundred or so years, we've suddenly been able to have vast amounts of excess glucose and uh, our body's still operating under the assumption that uh, it's feast now, famine later, and uh, we tend to have maybe a little more fat than uh, most of us would like because of that excess glucose we take in in our diet. Uh, it's also uh, sometimes uh, expelled in urine if there's a huge excess in uh, conditions like diabetes. 
obviously the desired way to deal with the glucose is through metabolism where we uh, combine that uh, glucose with oxygen to yield carbon dioxide, water, and energy. So again, blood glucose level tends to be monitored for different conditions. Uh, for an average healthy human, uh, the blood glucose level uh, tends to be in the range of 70 to 90 milligrams of uh, glucose per deciliter of blood. Uh, glucose tolerance test can be given. It measures blood glucose for several hours after ingestion, uh, and it's um, used to determine uh, conditions like hyperglycemia uh, or hypoglycemia, uh, or uh, certainly um, in pregnancy, glucose tolerance tests are often given to uh, determine if there's any sort of gestational diabetes present. Uh, and so uh, lots of different reasons. And if you've had to take a glucose tolerance test for any of those reasons or any other reason, you probably noticed that it's not, um, glucose isn't the best tasting, sort of a sickly sweet. Uh, it's not like sucrose, the table sugar we're probably used to. So it's probably an unpleasant thing and you probably had to drink a lot more than you wanted to, but it did give hopefully the uh, necessary results to um, determine if there's any underlying uh, blood glucose problem. Okay, moving on to D-galactose. And if you've been uh, paying very close attention, you probably noticed it's that carbon number four that differentiates glucose and galactose, right? Carbon number four in glucose, uh, we had the OH group on the right and the H on the left. In galactose here, we have them reversed. And that's why we're only looking at, at that last uh, chiral carbon, carbon five in these, in terms of D-glucose versus L-glucose. Because if we change uh, carbon four, we're not, galactose anymore we're glucose so uh, that's why we only look at changing the uh, relative position of that last chiral carbon furthest from the uh, carbonyl group because if we change any of the other ones we've changed the identity of the sugar instead of just the uh, d or l form of the sugar so back to d galactose it's an aldohexose with the formula c6h12o6 just like glucose Again, the thing that mainly distinguishes it is the relative position of the OH and H group on carbon-4. That's what makes galactose galactose and glucose glucose. Um, it's obtained from lactose, a disaccharide, a milk sugar, so it's called. It has a similar structure to glucose except for that OH group on carbon-4, as I've mentioned already. And it's important in cell membranes of the brain and nervous system. Again, it's very uh, important being derived from lactose uh, in early um, life as an infant when uh, you probably relied on uh, mother's milk or some sort of milk uh, simulated milk uh, formula uh, so on and so forth but there it is degalactose important uh, very important not quite to the level of glucose but still a critical one for cell membranes and uh, nervous system Okay, and now finally, uh, moving on to D-fructose, it's a ketohexose, so the other two important carbohydrates were the um, uh, aldohexoses, here's a ketohexose, still the same formula, C6H12O6, it's the sweetest carbohydrate, and uh, that's um, at least the one that doesn't taste sickly sweet or anything uh, funny like that, like some of the sugar substitutes, so it tends to be a very pleasant um, sweetness. It's found in fruit juices and honey. Actually, honey's half uh, fructose and half glucose, so uh, it's got that perfect ratio, uh, just like you would get from breaking down sucrose, actually. Uh, and in the body, it's converted into glucose. So, and then often, of course, if you've consumed a lot, then we go to glycogen or uh, fat, depending. So there we have it. It's uh, a very important natural sugar. Uh, and it's got that ketone functional group. It's our only important uh, ketone or uh, monosaccharide rather that is a ketohexose instead of an aldohexose. Uh, and so it's got some other structural features uh, that make it uh, special. But there we have that carbon number five, uh, the D form. So that OH group on the right of the Fisher projection is the one that we use biologically. Okay, so let's test your memory. I won't expect you on an exam to draw any of these things from memory. Of course, they're multiple choice exams, so you'll have the right answer there. Uh, but uh, I would expect you to at least be able to pick out fructose as a ketose, uh, hexoketose or ketohexose, I should say. Uh, and also uh, the D form would have that carbon number five with uh, the OH group to the right. So that's what I'm mainly making sure you'd be able to see for 
uh, defructose. So the um, important monosaccharides, I would hope you could recognize. I wouldn't expect you to have to draw them, but let's go ahead and give it a shot. Pause the video here, draw the Fisher projection of defructose, and then we'll check your work when you're done. Good luck. Okay, so there it is uh, as a keto hexose. You'd have that carbohydrate, uh, the six carbon uh, carbohydrate with the carbonyl group on carbon two. Uh, and then uh, it happens to have uh, carbons three, four, and five have OH groups left, right, right for the D fructose form. So uh, if you remember that, great. If not, make sure you could pick that out from a list where I might have an aldohexose, I might have uh, some other ketohexoses or things with even ketones on carbon-3, which uh, we know would be nonsense. Uh, so uh, along with some distractors, hopefully you'd be able to pick this one out. And certainly if you haven't caught on by now, the homework set questions are very closely aligned with the type of questions you expect on the exam. So how would I ask this on an exam? Well, take a look and see what the homework questions on Fisher projections might look like, and that'll give you a good guide. So whether you got this one from memory or not, it's not a big deal if you miss this one. But if you are really struggling with uh, the general uh, idea of Fisher projections or how you tell D from L isomers, uh, please do reach out to me and, and let's get that resolved. Otherwise, if things are going well, even if you couldn't remember exactly the relative positions of the OH groups on everybody but carbon-5 here, um, it's, it's still no big deal. Uh, hopefully, we'll keep uh, going ahead in uh, Chapter 15, uh, Lecture 3 will help you to continue to build up some steam on carbohydrates.